My name is Keith with CADSharp.com and in this short video I wanted to show you how you can convert a macro example you find in the API help into a usable example that you can run by going to tools macro and run or tools macro and edit like I'll show you in a moment. So for example, let's say that you're not very familiar with the SOLIDWORKS API, but you want a macro that will take each component in a drawing view and convert it to its own layer. And by layer, I mean if I right click up here, go to layer. So we want to put each one of the components on its own individual layer. And there is actually an example in the API help that will show us how to do that. And maybe you saw it linked to on the API forums, or maybe you were Googling and you found it. But to get to it, you can either get to it online if you have Use SolidWorks Web Help checked, or if you don't have this checked and click here, it'll open up the local API help. So that's what I'm going to do. And the local API help looks like this. And so if I type in layer and then component, it will actually take me to the example I was referring to. So to start off, what we're going to do is just copy all the text here. And we'll just do right click copy. And then after that, we're basically done with the API help. So you can close out of that if you want. Now, if you don't have the macro toolbar open you can right click and go to macro and it'll open it up or again you can go to tools and macro it's the same thing but uh, once you're there go ahead and click new macro and it doesn't matter where you save the macro or what name you give it I'll just call this create layer for each comp just make sure that the save as type is VBA and it will have the .swp file extension. And when you click save, it's going to open up the Visual Basic Editor. And once we're in the Visual Basic Editor, you'll notice that this is obviously the area that can, needs to contain the code. So let's just highlight everything that's already here and I'm going to hit Control V and that will paste in what I have copied to the clipboard. And you might get a pop-up indicating that there's been some syntax errors. You can just click OK to those. But you might notice that some of the text is red, and that's indicating that um, there are things wrong with the macro in its current state. And if, if we tried to run this by going up here and clicking the Run button, um, we would probably get several compile errors and things like that. So the macro in its current state will not run successfully so we need to fix it. So starting off we have this description up at the top that was included in the API help that just says what the macro does. And you either need to delete this or you need to turn it into a comment. And to turn it into a comment you just put an apostrophe in front and now it becomes green like the other comments in the macro. And as you guessed the purpose of the comments is usually just for documentation purposes to explain what the macro does, how to use it, make notes, that kind of thing. Now the next thing I like to do is make the macro a little bit more readable. And this next step is actually optional, but if you plan on working with the code it might be helpful for formatting purposes. I'm actually going to remove all of these extra blank lines that exist here. So you might notice they did not exist in the API help example, but when we pasted it in they were added and in my opinion that's kind of annoying and makes it harder to read so basically I'm just going to use the delete and down button and move through every single uh, line of code and remove all of those extra lines. Okay and again you might think that's not really necessary for me and that's fine you can skip it but I like to remove unnecessary lines and uh, once you've done that, or if you've done that, you might have noticed that uh, some of the red lines actually cease to be red, and that's because as we were moving down through all the blank lines and deleting them, we actually also removed some of the reasons that some of the lines were red, like this section, for example, was red before, and, and now it's not. But even if you didn't remove all the blank lines, what I'm about to show you will, will help you make all these other lines the proper color again. So basically what we have going on here is 
a declaration of a sub procedure or maybe a function. So it might say function instead of sub here, but then it'll have the sub procedure or function name. And after a function or sub procedure name, there needs to be an argument list. And the argument list needs to be enclosed in parentheses. And of course, the parentheses need to be facing one another. And as you can tell, these parentheses are not facing one another. This needs to be reversed. But there's still a little bit of confusion about the line breaks. And as you might have guessed, these underscores just let the programmer wrap a statement onto the next line. And that's used purely for formatting or vis visibility purposes so that a line of code doesn't extend way beyond the bounds of the code window. And uh, just for clarity, I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these underscores. And um, for example, we can remove that. And then let's come down here and let's also bring that parenthesis back up here. And you can see now it's able to make sense of what's going on. And again, if you wanted to remove the underscores and put it all on one line, you can, it doesn't really matter. But uh, we need to do the same thing down here now. This parenthesis is facing the wrong way, so let's go ahead and delete that, remove some of these extra lines. There, that seems to be working as well. So once we've done that, we are almost ready to run it. We can go ahead and click Save. And what we need to do next is come back up here and check out the preconditions that are given by whoever created this help example. And the preconditions are very important because this explains what needs to be in place before the macro can successfully run. And then likewise, the post conditions explain what we should expect after the macro has run successfully. So in this case, there's two preconditions for running this. First, a drawing view, or excuse me, a drawing is open and a drawing view of an assembly is selected. So let's go ahead and alt tab back to our drawing view. I'm going to click on it and then I'll alt tab back here. And what you can do if you want to run the macro within the Visual Basic editor is just go up here and click run. And when you do that, you may get this dialog box that pops up asking you what sub procedure you want to run. And most of the time, the main sub procedure is going to be called main. So if there's a list here, just pick main and click run. And here we got a little bit of text in the immediate window. So that showed us that uh, something did occur. And now if we come back here and if I open up the layer toolbar again, we see that several different layers have been added corresponding to the different components. So now that I've showed you how to run the macro from the Visual Basic Editor, I want to show you how you can run it from the macro toolbar. Uh, let's close out of this and in the macro toolbar, and again this is found under tools, you can just go to run and click run. Make sure that this is on SWP and then browse for your macro and keep in mind the preconditions. So right now I've forgotten to select the drawing view so when I run this I'm going to get this error and if you debug it it'll just open up the Visual Basic Editor otherwise I can click end. So you do want to make sure that you always have your preconditions correct. Now let's say that you have successfully taken into account your preconditions but for some reason you're still getting some error when you try to run it through the run button. That's probably happening because SOLIDWORKS is not exactly sure which function or sub procedure to run first in your macro. So whichever one it's picking to start with happens to be the wrong one. And so for that reason, you're getting some kind of error. So to prevent that kind of error, if it's happening, all you need to do is just create a custom macro shortcut somewhere. And to do that, we just right click on uh, the command manager or any toolbar and go down to customize and go to commands and macro and then new macro button you can just drag this onto your macro toolbar for example and as soon as you drop it you can browse for the SWP file and once you've browsed for it you're gonna have the option to specify a sub procedure to start from and again there's there's no issues running this macro there's only one sub procedure but if there were multiple ones, you would specify the main one here, the one you wanted to start with, and then you would click OK. 
And now all you have to do is select this or whatever your precondition is and then click that and it should run just fine. So that's all for now and uh, thanks for watching.